Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Natalie, and I'm laughing because Brian, the producer, oh, just threw something at me, which is the library strategies. I don't think you actually use this in library strategy. I think this is like a, a, a I don't know, it's a toy. So, welcome. Sorry that we missed Monday. It was Labor Day, and today is Wednesday. It's hump day. You're almost through with your week, thank goodness. It's already been quite a week for me, and we are going to... Re was my light not good? Got me some new lighting? Okay, hold on. We got to have, like, good lighting. Here we go. All right. How's this look, guys? Oh, I got to look at my little thing here. We'll turn off the house lights. All right. Okay. I guess I wasn't as prepared for my video as I thought I was. Ooh. Yeah, this is real professional. We need a different backdrop, though. You know, you should give me a green screen. Where are you? I'm right. You can. I'm right here. I can only see this little thing. This. This. Oh little, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I know. I don't know how to it's fix so that. Yeah, Camtasia is, is fun. In case Very anybody sorry. wondered, I've been recording this whole time. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay, Brian's gonna do his actual work now. And he just pretended to close the door so that he could say that he left and he didn't. But we are going to read when we finished up last, Apollo and Meg and Peaches were in the stadium of Commodus. And Commodus was being super extra like he always is because he's terrible. And now Apollo and Meg were like about to be killed by Commodus, I think. I can't entirely remember because I'll be honest. This is, I think I've already said this, this is not my favorite book out of all the ones Rick, Uncle Rick has written and I kind of feel like it's lasting forever. I enjoy the characters, but I don't like I don't really like this book. But I'm going to keep reading it for you guys because that's how selfless I am. Okay, so let's keep reading. Chapter 27. Destroy me a roof, bring me wenches with wenches. We're so out of here. Well, I say exploded. More accurately, the roof crumpled inward as roofs tend to do when a bronze dragon smashes into them. Girders bent, rivets popped, sheets of corrugated metal groaned and folded with a sound like colliding aircraft carriers. Festus plummeted through the gap, his wings or unfolding to slow his descent. He seemed no worse for wear from his time in suitcase form, but judging from the way he blew towards the audience in the stands, I guess he was feeling a bit cranky. Wild centaurs stampeded, trampling the mortal mercenaries in Germani. The Blemier clapped politely, thinking, perhaps, that the dragon was part of the show, until a wave of flames reduced them to dust. Festus flew his own fiery victory lap around the track, torching race cars as a dozen silvery ropes uncoiled from the roof, lowering the hunters of Artemis into the arena like a clutter of spiders. I've always found spiders fascinating creatures, despite what Athena thinks. If you ask me, she's just jealous of their beautiful faces. Boom. More hunters remained on the roof line with their bows drawn, laying down suppressing fire as their sisters lowered themselves to the field. As soon as the repellers hit the turf, they drew bows, swords, and knives and leaped into battle. Alaric, along with most of the Emperor's Germani, charged to meet them. At the goalpost, Meg McCaffrey worked frantically to cut Peaches free from his ropes. Two hunters dropped next to her. They had a hurried conversation with lots of pointing, something along the lines of, Hello, we are your friends. You're going to die. Come with us. Clearly agitated, Meg glanced across the field in my direction. I yelled, Go! Meg allowed the hunters to grab her and peaches. Then the hunters slapped some sort of mechanisms on the sides of their belts, shot back up the ropes as if, it was, as if the laws of gravity were mere recommendations. Motorized winches, I thought. A very nice accessory. If I live through this, I'm going to recommend that the Hunters of Artemis make t-shirts that read, Wenches with Wenches. I'm sure they'll love that idea. The closest group of hunters charged in my direction, meeting the Germani in battle. One of the hunters looked familiar, with choppy black hair and dazzling blue eyes. Instead of the usual gray camo of Artemis's followers, she wore jeans and a black leather jacket that was held together with safety pins and had patches for the Ramones and the dead Kennedys. A silver tiara glinted on her forehead. On one arm, she brandished a shield imprinted with the gruesome visage of Medusa. Not the original, I suspected, since that would have turned me to stone, but a good enough replica to make even the Germani cower and back away. The girl's name came to me. 
Thalia Grace, Artemis's lieutenant, the leader of the hunters, had personally come to rescue me. Save Apollo, she yelled. My spirit soared. Yes, thank you, I wanted to yell. Finally, someone has got their priorities straight. I felt for a moment as if the world were back in its proper order. Commodus sighed in exasperation. I did not schedule this for my games. He looked around, apparently just realizing he had only two guards and Lyterces left to command. The rest were already in combat. Lyterces, get out of there, he snapped. Slow them down while I go change. I can't fight in a racing outfit. This is ridiculous. Lit's eye twitched. Sire, you were about to relieve me of duty. By killing me? Oh, right. Well, then go sacrifice yourself. Prove you're more useful than the idiot father of yours. Honestly, Midas had the golden touch, and he still couldn't do anything right. You're no better. The skin around Lyterces' ostrich bruise reddened, as if the bird were still standing on his face. Sire, with respect. Commodus's hand shot out like a rattlesnake, clamping around the swordsman's throat. Respect? The emperor hissed. You talk to me of respect? Arrow sailed toward the emperor's remaining guards. Both Germani fell with lovely new silver feathered nose piercings. A third missile hurtled toward Commodus. The emperor yanked Lyterces into its path and the arrow point erupted from the front of, th of Lit's thigh. The swordsman screamed. Commodus dropped him in disgust. Do I have to kill you myself? Really? He raised his knife. Something inside me, no doubt a character flaw, made me feel pity for the wounded corn husker. Livia, I said. The elephant understood. She trunk smacked Commodus upside the head, knocking him flat on the turf. Lyterces fumbled for the hilt of his sword. Finding it, he jabbed the point into the emperor's exposed neck. Commodus howled, clamping his hand over the wound. Judging from the amount of blood, I deduced that the cut, sadly, had missed his jugular. Commodus's eyes blade, blazed. Oh, Lyterces, you traitor! I will kill you slowly for that. But it was not meant to be. The closest Germani, seeing their emperor bleeding on the ground, ran to his aid. Livia scooped up Lyterces and backed us all away as the barbarians closed ranks from Commodus, around Commodus, forming a shield wall. Their bristling pole arms pointed at us. Their Germani looked ready to counterattack. But before they could, a line of flames rained down between our two groups. Festus the dragon landed next to Livia. The Germani hastily retreated while Commodus screamed, Put me down! I need to kill those people! Atop Festus, Leo saluted me like a fellow fighter pilot. What's up, Lester Popolis? Joe got your emergency signal. She sent us right, er, back right away. Thalia Grace jogged over with two of her hunters. We need to evacuate. We'll be overrun in a few minutes. She pointed to the end zone, where the survivors from Thessus's fiery victory lap were starting to form ranks. A hundred assorted centaurs, cynocephaly, and demigods from the imperial household. I glanced to the sidelines. Leading into the lowest tier of seats was a ramp, possibly wide enough for an elephant. I'm not leaving Livia behind. Take Lyterces and take the throne of memory. I unslung the chair, thankful again for its light weight, and tossed it to Leo. That throne has to get back to Georgie. I'll ride Livia out on one of the mortal exits. The elephant dumped Lyterces on the turf. The corn husker groaned and pressed his hands upon the arrow in his leg. Leo frowned. Uh, Apollo? I will not leave this noble elephant behind to be tortured, I insisted. No, I get that, Leo pointed at Lit. But why do we have to take this fool? He tried to kill me in Omaha. He threatened Calypso at the zoo. Can't I just let Festus stomp him? No. I wasn't sure why I felt so strongly about it. Commodus betraying the swordsman, swordsman made me almost as angry as Nero manipulating Meg. Or, well, yes, Zeus abandoning me in the mortal world for the third time. He needs healing. He'll behave himself, won't you, Lit? Lyterces grimaced in pain, blood soaking through his tattered jeans, but he managed a slight nod. Leo sighed. <sighs> Whatever, man. Festus, we're taking this bleeding idiot with us, okay? But if he gets up a Dion route, feel free to chuck him against the side of a skyscraper. Festus creaked in agreement. I'll go with Apollo. 
Thalia Grace climbed up behind me on the elephant, which fulfilled a daydream I'd once had about the pretty hunter, though I hadn't imagined it quite happening this way. She nodded at one of her comrades. Iphigenia, get the rest of the hunters out of here. Go. Leo grinned and slung the throne of memory across his back. See y'all back home, and don't forget to pick me up some salsa. Festus flapped his metallic wings. The dragon grabbed Lyterces and launched himself inward. Or sky, or launched himself skyward. The hunters activated their winches. They ascended as the first wave of angry spectators arrived on the field, throwing spears and vuvuzelas that fell clattering back to the earth. When the hunters were gone, the crowd turned their attention to us. Livia, I said, how fast can you run? The answer? Fast enough to evade an armed mob, especially with Thalia Grace on her back, shooting arrows and brandishing her shield of terror at anyone who got too close. Livia seemed to know the corridors and ramps of the stadium. They'd been designed for larger crowds, which made them equally convenient for elephants. We made a few turns around the souvenir kiosks, barreled through a service tunnel, and finally emerged on a loading dock on South Missouri Street. I'd forgotten how wonderful sunlight felt crisp fresh air on a late winter day. Granted, it wasn't as exhilarating as driving the sun chariot, but it was a darn sight better than the snake-infested sewers of Commode Palace. Livia lumbered down Missouri Street. She turned into the first blind alley she saw, then stomped and shook. I'm pretty sure I understood her message. Take off this stupid chain mail. I translated for Thalia, who shouldered her bow. I don't blame her, poor elephant. Women warriors should travel light. Livia lifted her trunk as if to say thank you. We spent the next ten minutes de-armoring the elephant. Once we were done, Livia gave Thalia and me a group hug with her trunk. My adrenaline rush was fading, leaving me feeling like a deflated inner tube. I sat down with my back against the brick wall and shivered in my damn clothes. Thalia produced a canteen from her belt. Instead of offering it to me first, as would have been proper... She poured some liquid into her cupped hand and let Livia drink. The elephant slurped down five handfuls. Not much for a big animal, but she blinked and grunted in a satisfied way. Thalia took a sip herself, then handed the canteen to me. Thanks, I mumbled. I drank, and my vision cleared immediately. I felt as if I'd just had six hours of sleep and a good hot meal. I stared in amazement at the battered canteen. What is this? Not nectar. No, Thalia agreed. It's moon water. I dealt with the hunters of Artemis for millennia, but I had never heard of moon water. I recalled Josephine's story about bootlegging in the 1920s. Do you mean moonshine, as in liquor? Thalia laughed. No, it's not alcoholic, but it is magic. Lady Artemis never told you about this stuff, eh? It's like an energy drink for hunters. Men rarely ever get a taste. I poured a tiny bit into my palm. The stuff looked like regular water, though perhaps more silver, as if it had been blended with a trace amount of liquid mercury. I considered taking another sip, then decided it might make my brain vibrate to the point of liquefying. I passed back the canteen. Have you... have you talked to my sister? Thalia's expression turned serious. In a dream, a few weeks ago, Lady Artemis said that Zeus has forbidden her from seeing you. She's not even supposed to give us orders to help you. I had suspected as much, but having my fears confirmed would have overwhelmed me with despair if not for the moon water. Its energy burst kept me humming right along over the deeper emotions, like wheels skimming across the top of loose sand. You're not supposed to help me, I said, and yet you're here. Why? Thalia gave me a coy smile that would have made Rita Martis proud. We were just in the area. Nobody ordered us to help. We've been searching for a particular monster for months now, and she hesitated. Well, that's another story. The point is, we were passing through. We helped you the way we'd help any demigod in danger. She didn't mention anything about Rita Martis finding the hunters and urging them to come here. I decided to play her little game of let's pretend that never happened. Can I guess another reason, I said. I think you decided to help me because you like me. The corner of Thalia's mouth twitched. What makes you say that? 
Oh, come now. The first time we met, you said I was hot. Don't think I didn't hear that con- or didn't hear that comment. I was gratified to see her face turn red. I was younger then, she said. I was a different person. I just spent several days as a pine tree. My vision and reasoning were impaired from sap damage. Ouch, I complained. That's harsh. Thalia punched my arm. You need an occasional dose of humility. Artemis says so all the time. My sister is a sneaky, deceptive... Watch it, Thalia warned. I am her lieutenant. I crossed my arms in a petulant Meg sort of way. Artemis never told me about Moonwater. She never told me about the way station. It makes me wonder how many other secrets she's hiding. Maybe a few. Thalia's tone was carefully nonchalant. But you've got to see more this week than most non-hunters ever do. You should feel lucky. I stared down the alley, thinking of that first New York alley I'd fallen into as Lester Papadopoulos. So much had changed since then, and I was no closer to being a god. In fact, the memory of being a god seemed more distant than ever. Yes, I grumbled. Very lucky. Come on, Thalia offered me a hand. Commodus won't wait long before he launches a reprisal. Let's get our elephant friend back to the way station. All right, guys, that is it for today, and on Monday we will read more.